Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and in this lesson we'll be solving for x with one-step multiplication equations. We'll be solving for x in equations that involve multiplication. Let's go through one example here. Actually, we're going to do two examples, and then I'll give some questions for you to go ahead and solve. So, this is how we would solve for x with a one-step multiplication equation. We're going to follow the same three steps that we followed for addition, subtraction equations, and equations with decimals. First, we look at our equation, 4x equals 20. We look at our variable, x. We should be training our eyes that every time we see an equation, we immediately look for the variable. Then we ask ourselves, what happened to that variable, or what is connected to it? 4x means 4 times x. It's not written in there as 4 times x. It's when there's no operation written, it's an implied multiplication. So we're going to do the inverse or the opposite, which is to divide both sides by 4. I like to use fractions with dividing. You'll see the fractions used more and more um, as you move into algebra and later on. So I will write them out as a fraction, 4x divided by 4 and 20 divided by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, which leaves you with 1 times x. So you just have x by itself on the left side. And 20 divided by 4 is 5. Every time we solve an equation, we can check our work. So let's do it. If we can check our work before we submit it, that's a great, great thing. So we're going to substitute the value of 5 into the equation for the letter x. So instead of 4x, it will be 4 times 5. And 4 times 5 is equal to 20. Our equation is correct. We've solved 4x equals 20. x is equal to 5 in that equation. So um, I want to point out that this is intentional, just so that you don't stop stop watching when you see what I'm about to do. But I'm going to go ahead and solve this equation, 9x equals 81. Following those same three steps, I'm going to first find my variable, which is x. What happened? I'm multiplying times 9. 9x means 9 times x. The inverse would be to divide both sides by 9. So I'm going to take 9x divided by 9, which leaves me x on the left side, and 81 divided by 9. Here's where I'm being intentional. Please don't stop watching the video at this point. I'm going to say x is equal to 8. All right? And the reason I'm doing that is to show the importance of checking our work. So if I solved that and I said x is equal to 8 and I submitted my answer, I would get it wrong. But if I go back and take this and use it to check my work, Notice what will happen. I'm going to check my equation 9x equals 81 when x is equal to 8. I substitute 8 into the equation. 9 times 8 is 81. Wait a minute, 9 times 8 is 72. 72 is not equal to 81, so I can know that my work is incorrect. Every other check I've done, I've always had the right answer, so um, it almost seems like the check is a waste of time. But if you make a mistake, any type of mistake along the way, checking your work will catch that mistake. If it's a mistake in division, if it's a mistake in um, what number you're using, if it's just a typo, anything, Doing a check of your work will help you to catch those errors. So then we can go back and try again. Dividing both sides by 9, I get x is equal to 9. Okay, well, that makes sense. I'm going to check my work. 9 times 9 is 81, and that is correct. Woohoo! I found my mistake, and I was able to fix it. So just wanted to emphasize the importance of checking your work, because sometimes we make mistakes. And it's good to make sure that we have a backup plan. Now let's work with some negative numbers. We're going to follow the same three steps for solving this equation with our negative number. Find our variable, x. What's happening to our variable or what is connected to it? Multiplying times negative 9. So we're going to divide both sides of this equation by negative 9. Negative 9, negative 5. Ooh, I was stepping ahead there. All right, negative 5 divided by negative 5 gives, leaves x by itself on the left. 45 divided by 5 gives us our negative 9. I know I was skipping ahead and giving the answer. Um, but x is equal to negative 9. 
Let's double check. So I'm going to substitute negative 9 back into the equation there and see if negative 5 times negative 9 is equal to a positive 45. It is, and so I've done my work correct. You always want to check your work. Here is a question for you to go ahead and solve. Try this one out. Negative 7 x is equal to 29. Follow the steps. Try and solve this one. See what you get. All right, we are back. Our variable is x. What happened to x? We are multiplying times negative 7. So we are going to divide both sides by negative 7, written out like this. When we divide both sides by negative 7, something interesting happens. Because 29 divided by negative 7 um, gives us a really weird number, 4.142857143. Or approximately 4.14. And we are dividing a positive divided by a negative gives us a negative answer. That seems really weird. Whenever I get a weird answer like that, I check my work. So I'm going to check my work. Is negative 7 times x equal to 29? So I'm going to substitute this approximately equal to negative 4.14 into the equation. Notice when I do that, I change my sign from an equal sign to an approximately equal to sign. Those are squiggly lines. They mean they're, uh, it's about that amount. So I'm going to check my work. Negative 7 times negative 4.14 should be about equal to 29. When I plug that in, I get the answer of 28.98. That's really close. 28.98 is really close to 29. So I can be sure, or at least pretty sure, that my answer is correct. So I'm going to go ahead and say that one is right. It's sometimes difficult when you get weird numbers that give you decimals as answers. So make sure to double check your work. And when you're working with approximately equal to your answers can be very close. They don't need to be exact. So speaking of decimals, here's an equation that has a decimal in it. Go ahead and try to solve that one. We start out by finding our variable, which is x, and asking ourselves what happened. We multiplied times 0 0.5. So we are going to do the inverse, which is dividing by negative or by positive 0 0.5. Divide both sides by 0 0.5, and we get x is equal to 200. Hmm. Dividing made the number bigger. Sometimes you're taught in school that dividing makes numbers smaller. So when we get a situation where dividing makes numbers bigger, we check our work. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and check that and see what happens. Is 0 0.5 times 200 equal to 100? Yes, it is. Another way to say this, and this might help us to understand what happened, is 0 0.5 is equal to one half. And multiplication is often the word of. Is half of 200 equal to 100? Yes, it is. So dividing doesn't always make it smaller. Sometimes dividing does make it bigger. We got to keep that in mind and check out this question as a great example of that. Yeehaw. Quick recap. The steps for solving multiplication equations, find the variable, ask yourself what happened or what is connected to that variable, and then do the inverse operations. Make sure to do it on both sides of the equation. And although it's not written up here, we always check our work. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.